All right, so last time we, uh, when we had the class in person, uh, we were talking about the raceways and we went over pretty much most of the slides and that was the last slide that we uh, that we stopped before we had to leave and then we just had, uh, you know, it just turned out that it was just the last couple of slides that we were not able to finish up. So let's, uh, let's just tackle this first and before we move on to the pigtails. Right, so this is example of a wire way. That was the last slide. So sometimes the wires need to be enclosed uh, in um, in something that's called a wire way. So it's semi-sealed type of enclosed system, as opposed to the cable tray. See that? Let me just get that little hand here easier to point with. All right, so uh, this would be the cable tray, and uh, as uh, as far as uh, I remember I told you that this can be actually assembled from a strut material and strut is just like U shape kind of um, well metal sticks metal sticks uh, that uh, that you can cut and assemble just like Lego but this is this would be the Lego for adults or for grown out grown ups uh, that uh, you know it takes a little bit more skill than uh, than than just the Lego blocks uh, because the Lego blocks are a toy and this is the real thing. All right, so um, uh, you can assemble that. It looks like a this looks like an extension ladder or a straight ladder mounted in the ceiling. And if you notice here, can I zoom in? Yeah, it's mounted on, and we'll touch on that too uh, in the later uh, lectures. Right here, see. These are rods, and quite often there could be, well, thread, something that's called a threaded rod. So it's a rod that has a thread all the way through. It's just like a long bolt. And uh, in the hardware store, you can um, you can go in there. I think it's in, actually in the hardware section of most of the hardware stores um, <clears throat> that you can see the, something that's called threaded rods. And they have different diameter or cross section. And uh, they are they have different lengths, but they are sold in I'm not sure, like three, four foot sections sometimes, five feet sections, six foot sections, uh, and you can cut them to length because and because they have they are threaded all the way through, you can uh, you can mount one end into an anchor into an anchor in the ceiling, and you can mount the other end onto this uh, well cable tray and um, that's how we mount those things uh, we will talk about what type of anchors we should use and for which type of surfaces and whatnot but that's how they are mounted so as you can see uh, sometimes uh, uh, being an electrician or um, well systems installer or configurer all right uh, it, it, it sometimes it's more than just uh, connecting the screw terminals and uh, stripping the end of the wires and putting them in those little tiny holes and putting those, uh, uh, making those connections tight. Uh, quite often, uh, before you were able to uh, even run any piece of wire, you should, uh, you, the, what's involved is uh, assembling the wire way. And in this case, it's a cable tray. Sometimes you're going to be required to put in a different uh, raceway uh, depending on the contract and the situation and so uh, whatever else contributes to the need of one piece of equipment over the other all right okay so here is an example of a wireway and the wireway is supposed to hold wires you see that now this is a quite full wireway the wireways could be used for electrical wiring uh, you can put single conductors there and you can fill them up uh, as long as uh, you don't get more than 70% fill. Uh, does this thing look like more than 70% fill? Well, maybe it does uh, on this picture, but if you see that here, it's not uh, it's not fully to the top. It's not fully filled to the top, so it's here. Right? And also these uh, wire, um, those wireways, uh sometimes quite often are being used for data cabling as well of course we are not mixing electrical wires with data cabling in the same wire way but uh, you can have two separate ones one for the electrical wires and one for the data signal and add whatever not whatever other type of control wires uh, that that you're going to uh, need to run and uh, 
if you pursue your career, uh, if you pursue this type of uh, direction as far as your career of money making ways, uh, either as an electrician or as a data person, um, you are going to be dealing with uh, with having to assemble some of those uh, some of those structures as well. And the more you know how to do, it, the more employable you will be. All right? Um, okay, so that's the wire way. Now, here is, let me just zoom out a little bit. Uh, there we go. Here's something that's called a bus bar. See what happens here? The bus bar, it's almost like, well, you see the, the, the cable tray looked like the, as I described, the Lego blocks for grown-ups. Right. Well, this is for the. This is like Lego blocks for grown-ups that did some extra grow growing. <laughs> um, so, what happens is, is, is you get modules of wires that you assemble and put them together. To construct a certain type of connection or bunch of connections or multiple connections as you go along it's well it is way more expensive than running the single conductors in the cable trays at the end of the day it does look a little bit neater so well it depends on the situation it depends on the contract and depends on a lot of things which way you can do can you go the other way with just running a single conductor so Maybe yes, maybe not, uh, depending on the contract, as I say. Oh, look, those are also supported by here. See, there's a threaded rod, and here is a strut. See that? This thing here, that little, well, not, not little, that long piece of metal stick is called a strut. And it has some holes in the mounting holes, so you can cut that to piece, uh, cut that to length, and you can also cut the threaded rods to length, and you can do all kinds of construction with that, mounting things on the in the in the ceiling, right? Because everything should be, have should be suspended properly. Right? Now uh, that's one way of using the bus bar. Another way of using the bus bar is this the last slide? Yes, this is the last slide. So another way of using a bus bar that you're going to encounter quite often is, um, well, let me call up this picture. I got this thing ready. Mm -hmm. I know I had it. There it is. I'm going to slide it over here. It's uh, something, that's, something that's called modular furniture, in particular office modular furniture. And there are hundreds of designs as far as modular furniture. I just googled modular furniture and pressed images and this is what I got. Well, here's an example of modular furniture. Here is an example right here of modular furniture right here. Here is an example of modular furniture. Some of the most popular uh, things that you're going to encounter would be something like this. Oh. All right. When you have, let's say that this is an island here. All right. So here's a workstation, here's a workstation, here's a workstation and whatnot. And the wire, the wires are going to be brought by the means of, well, this is just a, um, whatever the company office stock. I'm just randomly Googling things. Um, the wires can be brought in from the ceiling by the means of something that's called a pack pole, which is basically um, a wireway or raceway that goes from the floor here right up to the ceiling, and it contains wires. And it's divided. Half of it could be electrical, and half of it uh, could be for the data wires. So that's a piece of modular furniture. Let me just um, get uh, another picture here. So, because we're talking about the bus bar type of um, 
connection. Just trying to find a better one. Like, for example, this one here. Can we uh, make it bigger? Here. I wonder if I can... Uh, okay, so those workstations, they can be assembled in this type of way. I can just seem to keep that thing on the screen here, right? Uh, where the wires could be brought in from... <laughs> All right, can we do this? Oh, it's blocked. All right, so the wires can be brought in because that thing, this whole workstation, can be pushed against the wall. So the wires can be brought through the wall, inside the wall, and there could be an opening panel at the back, and they could be connected to the bus bar that most of the time is right here okay and it's just like those modular type of lock on uh with the connectors and it's it looks like a st strip with a connector at one end a connector on the other end and inside that uh right here inside uh, on the bottom side, there could be duplex receptacles already implemented in that bus bar. So this could have this could be armed with this bus with a bus bar here. And if you put this thing against the wall, you can grab the uh, feed from the inside the wall, or you can grab the feed from the pack pole, which is basically a vertical stick that goes from the floor to the ceiling and it has wires in it, or you can also, if you add more furniture towards like this way here or that way, the bus bar, you can just grab the connector out of here and connect that, snap it on to another connector that goes there. So that's uh, quite often uh, a solution that uh, the bus bar is being used in modular furniture as well. So I just gave you two basic examples of how we can use the modular furniture or the bus bar all right okay so that's it for about that's about it for the um uh, for the wires uh, wire ways for the raceways all right that uh, that uh, that we're going to cover now we're going to move on to the pigtails and this is going to be tricky i'm sometimes i'm trying to because our class is half online and half in person i wish we had all online or all in person. I prefer all in person. So sometimes I'm trying to shuffle things that um, some of the classes are better to show in person. Um, but in this case, I just couldn't because I wanted to show some of that stuff in person um, with the wires and the raceways because I was able to point things in our room um, as far as raceways. Um, but then again, there are some videos that I needed to play um, from YouTube, and I'm not able to do this thing right now. So, let's, before I talk too much here, let me bring this up. All right, wire knots and pigtails. <clears throat> All right, so here, is, here are the links to some of the videos that I want you to watch. And uh, well, this one here show the first one here shows um, the potential of something bad going, uh, happening when the connections are not made properly. If you notice, all the way through, we are putting a great stress on you connecting the connections in the most proper way that they can be done. There is a reason for it. First of all, well, reason number one, functionality. What is the reason that you're doing something? Uh, you know, what would be the reason to do something if it's not going to function? Right? So 
Here's the philosophy 101. Uh, homegrown, by the way, philosophy. But anyways, um, but the other, uh, the other thing is once it functions, it has to be safe. And when we talk about power, we can talk also about heat, right? And heat, if it accumulates more and more and more, it escalates, it can actually start a fire. So here is uh, a little bit of, uh, of visuals you're going to get here. Um, it's basically, as a, it's a simulated back connection and they have a camera on that, um, on what's happening to the wire nut when nothing. This guy shows how to make electrical pigtail in this second video. Uh, it's pretty interesting video. I like it. Now, when we are making, when we made the pigtails in our lab, which was uh, in our room, uh, which was the previous lab that we did, we had uh, the comfort of having long wires positioned in our hands on our table and we could just get comfortable access to that. Well, the reason for that is that I need you to know how to do this thing first. I wanted to get you to get the concept of, the, of, of, of going through this process. Okay? Once you get comfortable with that, then you will be okay with dealing with the reality where things are not as comfortable as our countertop in our classroom. Right? So this was we this would be one of the situations here. Now this here and this here, these two, they talk about and they put different perspectives on the same thing. I wanted you to know uh, that well, just because you see something on YouTube uh, doesn't mean that it's uh, well. We already know that, right? I don't think I have to explain this thing. So I have two different perspectives on how to choose the uh, wires, wire nuts or the twist on connectors. And uh, they used to be called, well, still a lot of people call them Moretz because Moret was the company that first came up with that. And uh, well, just like this, well, Xerox analogy, you know, can you Xerox these papers? Xerox is a brand. Uh, so things like that. All right, so, uh, uh, and, um, there are some, well, you will see, there's there's some advice on how to choose the what properly wire nuts. This will be the wire nuts right here. Um, and here is a picture of how we would use those, uh, uh, well, one of the situations that we would use the pigtails. But... Um, Yeah, just watch these videos, and the next time we see each other in person, I'm going to point. I'm going to go back to those videos and just point little tiny bits, uh, and it's going to probably take about three or four minutes of me talking there. Right? Um, on that, and you're probably going to have some some questions because there are some conflicting statements between this video and this video here. And you will see that, all right? So uh, what do we do? Well, you decide. One of them is, uh, well, um, the question of to pre-twist or not to pre-twist. I think somebody copied that and used that in, uh, in, 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 in um, well, in a play because you see here, it sounds like, to be or not to be. So I think Shakespeare got the idea from this here because there was that forever debate on pre-twist the wires or not to pre-twist the wires and he maybe he heard two electricians talking and uh, he then copied that idea and wrote the to be or not to be. Anyways, so that's my thing. Eh? All right, so <clears throat> what do we mean by pre-twist or not to pre-twist? Remember I showed you that pre-twisting thing before we apply the wire nut. Now, there is uh, there is forever going a holy war between two camps of electricians and one of the camps is saying uh, we should pre-twist always. And the other camp is saying, no, it's not necessary to pre-twist, blah, 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 right? So 
one thing that and and I was watching all kinds of opinions by and listening to other, one thing that spoke to me is this here and I actually drew a little bad picture of it but here it is let's say these are conductors one two three four five six seven now that's a lot of conductors right? but let's say there is just more than three because if you had three conductors you're going to have all three touched or grabbed by the thread by the thread of this wire nut but what if we have more than three now this is exaggeration here but just to give you the visual if you have more than three there's a chance that one of the conductors is not going to be grabbed by the thread of the wire nut but it's just going to be squished by the other conductors that are surrounding and these are the ones that are going to make contact with the thread with the thread here of the wire nut so by pre-twisting you're giving that extra structure to this whole assembly here and you're making a better connection that is what spoke to me that made me decide that i'm going to be on that side of the holy war of to pre-twist or not to pre-twist uh, that uh, i would like to uh, uh you know so and if i show you how to pre-twist then you will know how to twist and then if you want to switch to not twisting you just don't do that right but at least you know how to do this and this here that is the big reason that spoke to me of why to pre-twist or not to pre-twist okay now uh, the pigtails are being used to well join wires like for example in this case here here is a duplex receptacle that needs to be mounted on the junction box that has other wires in it you're not going to get all these here and twist it into a braid and try to mount it on a screw terminal that you're not going to do that you're going to make a pigtail and out of that you're just going to bring one wire onto the screw terminal of the duplex receptacle in this case you're going to make things nice neat functional and safe now sometimes you're going to need to use the pigtails to extend wires because let's say it's an old construction old existing construction site and you need to mount the duplex receptacle and you're just going and you're going to find out that well you know somebody cut those wires too short and it's just not enough to make the connection from the from where the wires are coming out into the box and into here so what you're going to do is just going to do one two and you can extend those wires comfortably so you would make a pigtail that consists of just two wires right? uh, and other why other uh, re reasons you would uh, you would want to make pigtails would be if you are going to use just a junction box situation if you're going to have a junction box situation where no device is going to be connected but the wires would have to be routed uh, in certain way or another so there will be the three scenarios that I can uh, like that I could think of. Here, people get people are getting hung up on uh, what color of the wire nut or what color of the morets uh, is for what size of the wires and uh, all that stuff. I just want you to I just wanted you to point to one kind of uh, thing that is going on. If you're talking about colors and sizes of the twist on connectors what are you talking about you're talking about colors and the sizes associated with a particular brand that produces those so another brand may use their own slightly different color code so i just wouldn't pay attention to the color code of that because it's not a really color code it's not something it's not something official 
it's just different brands are coding or color coding their own product in a certain way. So if you're trying to remember yellow or red or black or blue, you know, that could apply to certain brand when it comes to sizing. So I just wouldn't pay attention to the color that much. If you get those more red types and the orange ones, yeah, okay, they are pretty common ones. But try not to pay attention too much to the colors and try not to think that you have to know your colors of the reds. And if you don't, oh, whoa, you know, somebody's going to think less of you. No, just know that the colors, what, well, okay, I'm going to say, not going to say it the third time. Now, as far as sizes and capacity of those. All right. I just took a picture of the box that we have in class. And it says one size fits all. And here's the same thing in French. So we need, okay. Um, <laughs> but there's always a but here. And the but here is the asterisk. How can they say one size fits all? And there's but, right? <laughs> all right. And the but is look at the chart. Let's see where the charts are. Of course, we already have done the pigtails, so you know that it's a twist on connector that consists of a plastic housing with a thread inside, and this thread is supposed to grab the uh, wires uh, and it's supposed to enclose or enhouse those wires in a way that. There is no bare copper sticking up there and the connection is nice and solid and safe and nothing punctures through this. And that's why uh, we were uh, stressing out the importance uh, of trimming the end of it nice and square. So there was no a single wire that sticks out because if all the other ones are grabbed by the thread here, they could push the whole thing in and they could that uh, one of the wires could puncture through the housing. And it's not a very happy situation because that bare copper is connected to something on the other end and it can connect to something on this end and that would be not a good thing. Huh? All right, so as far as sizes, one size fits all. Well, here's the asterisk. Listed as pressure type wire connector for use on solid and or stranded wire. You're going to notice one thing. I'm going to stop on here for a sec. You're going to notice one thing that it is relatively comfortable to connect, to make a pigtail connection out of conductors that all of them are solid. It's, it's quite comfortable to make a pigtail. We just did that, right? It's also relatively comfortable to make those connections with when when all the wires in the bundle are stranded. But somehow I just uh, have, well, not a problem, but a little bit of that, if you can say that, if you have, if you use combination of solid or stranded. And as you go along your journey, you're going to know exactly what I mean. And some of us already know. Because we can, no matter what we do, we're going to end up with a wraparound thing, which is not a happy situation. And there are some ways to, uh, to do that. Some people coat that thing, coat the endings with the solder. Some people put some other connectors on. And sometimes people use the all different type of connector altogether. In uh, Europe, when I'm talking to some of my friends uh, who live there, um, it's very popular. What's very popular is those WAGO type of connectors, W-A-G-O, I think, or G-G-O uh, type of connectors. And all the devices, including all muscle devices, including the duplex receptacles, they, instead of screw terminals, they have those WAGO type of uh, kind of a snap-on connectors. There are different opinions. Some people love it, some people don't. As long as it's approved, then you can use it, right? Uh, so, uh, all right. As far as the 
how many can you fit? Uh, all right, what does it say here? Listed as pressure type wire connector for use on solid and or stranded wire combinations. Here's minimum. Here's maximum. Minimum. Because the thread is certain size and if you put not enough there that the overall thickness of the combination of the whatever you twist there or put together if it doesn't have enough meat on it that thread it won't be able to grab it right uh, so minimum three of 22 gauge 22 gauge is quite thin wire it's 22 gauge uh, you are using some of the 22 and 24 gauge uh, you, you are using those little breadboard connections when you're connecting a couple of resistors in the capacitor and connecting to a power supply so those, these are the hookup wires that's the thickness so, so minimum three of 22 gauge and maximum because if you put more than three conductors that are 10 gauge uh, then the thread not, might not be able to grab that thickness. All right, it's going to be too big to uh, uh, for for that for that connector. Right? So, and this is about the connectors that are sold in this box. So, my point I'm trying to get across is try not to figure out the color coding because they vary the color codes that of the connectors because that that could vary from brand to brand brand look at the specifications on the box of the particular connection connectors that you buy and i suppose this one includes free knife huh? i guess if you want to join a poker game after work all right <laughs> um all right so um yeah that would be like if you're making a movie like a western movie right, okay there we go uh all right what else uh okay so minimum three of 22 gauge maximum th maximum three of 10 gauge and most see here's the thing and most applications in between including one to three 12 gauge why would you put one does it make sense to put one? You're not connecting this thing to anything. It makes sense to put uh, put that one of those on a single conductor if you want to make sure that that conductor is not going to touch anything else. It's called blinding the wire. You're going to blind that thing with one connector just to make it safe. All right. So uh, and then one to five, 14 gauge, four. Uh, number uh, 14 gauge with two see that w with two of 16 gauge and so on there's the connection and here's the same thing in french all right uh, because we need that uh all right so this is pretty much as far as <laughs> the, the lecture that we're going to have as far as the wire nuts twist on connectors or wire connectors That have to do with the twist on right and with the pigtails all the rest is in the other video that uh, that i have done uh, so watch that if you really want to review some of that stuff and if you want to make one of those uh, somewhere in the future you can go back to the video that i made on how to exactly do it the practical side of it and this i just give you a little bit more background on this and that is supported also with four six two and a half nine it's, it's about 20 25 minutes of, of videos and uh, see if you can have any questions there or maybe maybe you can make some interesting comments and we're going to get back to it for about three or four minutes uh next time we see each other all right so this is as far as uh the class today and uh, i'm just going to ask you to enjoy the weekend uh, maybe this will be the first time you get a chance to rest after the reading week okay cool Thank you, Riley. Have a good, good weekend as well. Yeah, I just told you to have a good weekend. So make sure you do, all right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Now I have to find a button to press to finish this whole thing.
Uh, there we go. Bye.